Hello, this tutorial will cover working with sub-portfolios in Fund Manager. When working with sub-portfolios, you'll use this portfolio editor window. The portfolio editor window is shown here. It contains all your sub-portfolios on the left side, and whatever you select on the left, its immediate contents are shown on the right in this list view. If you're not already in the portfolio editor window, you can get to it from within any other window in Fund Manager by selecting View, Portfolio Editor. Portfolios, sub-portfolios allow you to organize your accounts. Uh, typically, your lowest level sub-portfolios are your account level sub-portfolios, and these directly contain your investments. For example, this Scott Trade sub-portfolio contains two investments, and you can see these account level sub-portfolios that contain investments have a slightly different icon with a little green arrow indicating that they directly contain investments, as opposed to, for example, this all accounts sub-portfolio, which is just the yellow because it only contains other sub-portfolios and doesn't directly contain any investments. To demonstrate creating another layer of sub-portfolio hierarchy, uh, we'll group these two daughter sub-portfolios into another layer of hierarchy. To do this, you would first create the additional layer. So we want to add daughter inside all accounts. So I'm going to right mouse click on all accounts, select the new sub-portfolio command. It's going to say daughter. And typically for organizational level sub-portfolios, you won't have an account number, or default cash account, or any of these other settings. So we'll just enter a name and press OK. And you can see it added it to our list. It's empty right now. To add these two sub-portfolios into Dotter, we'll highlight the parent of what we want to move, because we want to move these two sub-portfolios into Dotter. So we'll highlight all accounts so that we see the contents of all accounts on the right. And it contains these two sub-portfolios. You can use the control and shift keys to select multiple items. So I'm going to select both of the daughter accounts, and I'm going to drag and drop over onto the daughter sub-portfolio. And now you can see the daughter sub-portfolio has a little plus sign indicating that there's something in it. And now we've created another level of hierarchy. So when you report, um, you can pick which level of sub-portfolio hierarchy you want to report at. You can report all the way at the top level or any level beneath it. So we'll create a sample portfolio value report. And here's where you would choose which level of hierarchy you want to report on. And for this, we'll just report on their, our new daughter sub-portfolio. And you can optionally have it subtotal um, any sub-portfolios that are beneath it. So we'll leave that on so that we can see a subtotal for each of our two accounts. Here you can see the total for the daughter, and then you see a subtotal for each of her two accounts, and then it, it lists the investments that are, that are in each of her accounts. If you want to see what it would look like without subtotaling, um, it's just going to be a flat listing of investments because we're choosing to list by investment in this case. So now you can see it's just a flat listing of investments without the subtotals. But notice the daughter level subportfolio contains everything and all the subportfolios beneath it. You can have as much subportfolio hierarchy as you want. So if you wanted to group them in another way, we could add another layer of hierarchy. Uh, for example, if we wanted to group them by tax status, we would create two new subportfolios. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. I'll just say taxable. And tax free. So now I have two new sub portfolios. And I could say my 401k and my Roth belong in tax free. And I'll just put daughter, Scott Trade, son, and TD Ameritrade over into taxable. Now, under all accounts, I've got these two layers. I've got tax-free 
taxable, and I've grouped them into another layer of hierarchy so that if I were to run a report or graph, I could now report at the tax-free or taxable level. And I'll just show you how to undo that. So if I wanted to eliminate a layer of hierarchy, I would move these lower level sub portfolios out first, move them back to the all accounts layer. When you're dragging and dropping, you want to highlight the, uh, the parent of what you want to move on the left so that you see the item that you want to move listed on the right and then click and drag from the right over onto the left wherever you want to drop it. So now I'm going to eliminate the text. I want to remove these two. So I'm just going to close them and it says, are you sure? And I say yes. Another common usage of sub-portfolios is to help separate actual holdings from things like watch lists, indices, and maybe exchange rate investments. Here you can see uh, we have an indices sub-portfolio that contains a couple of indices that we like to include on some of our reports, uh, but they're in a separate layer of hierarchy from all accounts so that they don't get included in the all accounts totals. For additional flexibility on grouping sub-portfolios, you can also use link sub-portfolios. Link subportfolios can be useful to organize uh, your same existing subportfolios into additional hierarchies. Uh, using link subportfolios allows you to have an exact mirror image of a different subportfolio located somewhere else in the hierarchy without duplicating data. It's just an exact mirror image. We've done this under these by person and by type subportfolios by including links. So for example, this 401k is a link over to this actual sub-portfolio. You can see that it's, the link has been assigned and it's just a pointer to the 401k sub-portfolio. So if I wanted to create another link into, um, for example, I'll add uh, let's see, which one should I add? I'll add my daughter Vanguard to the regular sub-portfolio here as a link. So to do that, you just say new sub-portfolio. And instead of creating a regular new sub-portfolio, you click on this button here, link to. And I want to create a link over to daughter Janice. Say OK. And you can see it took on the properties. They're read-only, but it's, it's linked over to this other sub-portfolio. So when I say, OK, daughter Janice is going to show up here where I added it. So you can see that the icon is purple, indicating that it's a link. And it's a link over to this sub-portfolio. So it looks just like it contains the same items as the regular sub-portfolio. But any changes that we make to this sub-portfolio are automatically reflected over here. And this allows you to create a whole other separate hierarchy without duplicating and copying data. It just automatically updates this whenever anything in here changes. Subportfolios can also be marked as hidden. Um, for example, if you close all the investments, uh, if you sell everything in an account and you no longer want it cluttering up your screen, you can mark it as hidden by going to the properties of a sub-portfolio and turning on this hidden attribute. Here we've marked TD Ameritrade as hidden. Right now it's being displayed, but if you want to actually hide your hidden items, you have to go to the View menu and turn off Hidden Investments and Portfolios. And when I do that, the TD Ameritrade uh, is no longer displayed. Hidden items are still factored into your overall portfolio calculations and they're in your historical records. They're just not actually displayed. Um, similarly uh, to hiding is closing, but closing actually completely removes a sub-portfolio from your record. So if you just don't want to have anything 
to do with it anymore, you can close it for some, like, maybe you made a mistake and you just want to start over, or um, it's just something that you don't want in your records anymore, you could close the sub-portfolio. You can close any sub-portfolio by right mouse clicking on it and pressing close, or use this toolbar button or edit and close. And it'll give you a warning uh, that you're about to close it and it's going to be completely and permanently removed from your records and is that okay? And if you're okay with it, you would just say yes and it will uh, remove it. And we had a pointer to it so that pointer is also going to be removed, the two link sub-portfolios that we had to it. Okay, uh, I think that covers our tutorial on sub-portfolios. Thanks for watching.